Ready to go? Committee will come to order. Thank you for being here. The purpose of today's hearing is to examine the benefits and risk of cloud computing for the federal government. At the most basic level, cloud computing is web-based computing, whereby computing resources are shared and accessible over the internet on demand. In this way, cloud computing is like most utility services. Before the electric grid was developed, business owners who wanted to use machinery also needed to produce enough energy to run that machinery. That meant investing heavily to build and maintain a power source. The electric grid revolutionized the country by centralizing the resource and allowing businesses to simply purchase electricity. Cloud computing promises the same for computing power. Instead of building and maintaining an entire IT system in-house, businesses can purchase computing power and tap into the resource over the internet. Cloud computing is a very real technology that the federal government has already begun to embrace. The Federal Cloud Computing Initiative and an online cloud computing storefront were launched in September 2009. I've read that the government-wide implementation of cloud computing will be a decade, a long journey. It is the job of this committee to ensure that journey is well thought out, that the benefits and risks are fully examined, and that there are comprehensive plans in place to ensure that we do this the right way the first time around. The shift to cloud computing offers the federal government tremendous promise, but it is not without risk. The balance between risk and reward is an important one, and I hope to get a better understanding of that balance today. It is clear to me that security and privacy are real concerns. Our natural impulse is to hold the things we value too close to us, but cloud computing requires entrusting data to others. The law's current focus on the physical location of data also presents unique privacy and legal challenges. A major benefit of cloud computing is the potential for significant cost savings. It makes sense. Cloud computing allows agencies to pool resources and pay only for the computing power that they actually use. I look forward um, to today's hearing, to a thorough examination of the Federal Cloud Computing Initiative, and to addressing the emergency legal and policy issues that Federal Cloud Computing presents. I want to thank all of our witnesses for appearing here today and I would like to, uh, and I really look forward to your testimony. And at this time, I would like to yield five minutes to the ranking member of the committee, gentleman from California, Congressman Issa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, too, am looking forward to this important hearing. I, too, am expecting that if you and I are still serving here on the dais in 10 years, we will still be holding hearings on some portions of this. I base that on a hearing we had just a week ago in which we recognized that halfway through a contract that saved the American people through its government huge amounts of money if we implemented new contracts the GSA had negotiated for telecommunications, ones that offered higher internet speeds, uh, better telecommunication, better redundancy, and new features were not implemented even though they would save money because, of course, bureaucrats move slowly. So today, as we hear about cost savings, I will not yawn, I will not pretend to be disinterested, but I will not be a true believer from the dais that cost savings will drive this move to cloud computing. I will be particularly interested in details as to how companies believe that they can implement guaranteed security in a cloud environment. As all of you know, 
we do not guarantee security. We have breaches every week, every month, sometimes every day in government. And even here in the Capitol, the Chinese mainland government has repeatedly breached and taken or confidential, not classified, but confidential information from the House. They regularly are able to penetrate our security. So as we look to the Internet through a web browser, we need to do better, not just as good as we are doing here today. Often said, history does not always repeat itself, but it very often rhymes. Today, as we start looking at cloud computing, at my age, I find that it's rhyming rather humorously. When I began uh, my career, we were still using NCR 500s. We would put as many of those card-reading computers in as close as we could to the source, and they would run the cards back and forth distributing to us uh, punching machines so that we could prepare our jobs and then go to that massive and expensive product and have it run. By the time I was a young officer, I was running a, uh, a deck facility with PDP 1145s and deck 10s. Wonderful computers that could multitask, that could have multiple clients at one time, that could load share and balance, that could distribute priorities of who needed what when but yet it was still we sending to the big machine and the machine deciding what we would get when. As we look at the cloud, there is no question that we can look at the cloud as thousands, millions of computing devices available to us to load share. Or in the rhyming way, we can look at it as simply deja vu all over again. In fact, the cloud in any configuration is nothing but a return to those DEC-10 machines. You can have different sizes, you can have dual processors, you can share multiple across. We once had 14 PDP-11s all deciding with one, one central uh, arbitrator who got what load when for what computing in order to keep us in real time. All of this has been done before, but near, not nearly at the scale it's being done. And in my case, all of my previous history in the military was a closed system an extremely closed system. Today we're going to talk about an open system, one in which encryption over a public line is our guarantee and our only guarantee that the data flowing back and forth will remain in the hands of those that it came from and is intended to go back to. I look forward to hearing how we can and should implement both public and often private cloud computing systems, how the government can once and for all recognize that owning a computer is not as important as owning computer power time, something that 30 or 40 years ago everybody understood that owning time on a computer was what you did, not in fact owning a computer. But weaning the federal government off of the idea that they have endless arrays of PCs and servers all within a server room that they can walk to will take time and will take initiative by this committee. So because this is a government-wide problem, we believe, the chairman and I, that this is a government oversight solution that must be pushed through day after day, Congress after Congress. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back the balance of my time and thank you for this hearing. Right. I'd like to thank the gentleman from California for his statement. Um, at this time, uh, we'd like to ask you to stand and let me swear you in. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? If so, answer in the affirmative. You may be seated. Let the record reflect that all the witnesses answered in the affirmative. Let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Kundra. And as you know that um, you have five minutes and then, of course, uh, at the end of four minutes, the yellow light will come on, which means caution. And then one minute after that, the red light will come on. And all, every place in the United States of America, that means stop. <laughs> so, Mr. Kunja, will you start? Great. Uh, good morning, Chairman Towns, Ranking Member Issa. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to testify today on cloud computing and the federal government's approach towards cloud computing. What I'd like to do is draw your attention to the first slide uh, that you see before you. Earlier this week, 
the Obama administration focused on addressing some of the most persistent and structural issues we've faced as an administration when it comes to information technology. The United States government is the largest buyer of IT on the planet. We spend approximately $80 billion annually on information technology systems. Yet, as you see on this slide, I want to point to one example. The Department of Defense spent 12 years and a billion dollars on deploying an integrated human resource system, which ended up failing. And Secretary Gates said essentially that what we ended up with was an acronym that nobody could pronounce. Therefore, earlier this week, on Monday, we announced aggressive steps in terms of how we're going to confront some of these issues. June of last year, we deployed an IT dashboard that shines light on every aspect of government operations when it comes to information technology spending with literally the picture of every agency CIR right next to the IT investments that they're responsible for. So the American people could see where they were in terms of cost, schedule, and whether they're meeting performance targets or not. What we are doing is approaching this problem in three ways. Number one, effective immediately, we're going to be reviewing the most troubled IT investments across the federal government as part of the fiscal year 2012 budget process and make decisions around where we need to halt, terminate, or turn around these investments. Number two, affected immediately, we've halted future task orders on financial systems across the federal government uh, for the CFO Act agencies to make sure that we're not throwing good money after bad money. And number three, in the next 120 days, we're focused on making sure that we address some of the structural issues, understand what's going on, why for the last 50 years, as we've tried to address some of these persistent problems, we continue to have spectacular failures in federal IT. On slide two, what I want to draw your attention to is what the federal government has been focused on. Unfortunately, the number of data centers in the United States government has gone from 432 to over 1,100 in a decade, while in the private sector, IBM went from 235 data centers to 12. That's not sustainable in the long term as we continue to plow capital in data center after data center. The next slide shows how other, industry, as other industries have applied these innovations around utility uh, models, as you pointed out, Chairman Towns. We've seen this happen in the electricity space where every home used to have to use candles to light their homes to where now they just plug into the grid. Or with water, uh, every home used to have to essentially have a well to get water. Now what we see is the ability to turn on and off a tap to consume those resources. That is one of the reasons we're moving towards the cloud environment. It's not just about cost. It's also about making sure that we're providing better service so CIOs are focused not on investing on yet another data center, but actually providing better services. I want to point you to the next slide, which is a tale of two cities. In the first story, how the government deployed an IT system versus how a private sector company deployed an IT system. When we deployed a cash for clunkers program, we, we, we deployed the traditional approach to IT. And as demand grew, the system was unstable and continued to crash over a 30-day period. And we had to literally re-engineer the solution, buy new hardware, and configure it. Yet, a company called Animoto faced a similar problem, but was using cloud technology with 250,000 new users enrolled over a three-day period, they were able to scale from 50 virtual machines to over 4,000 virtual machines and supported, at a peak times, 20,000 new users an hour. What I want to point to in the next slide is what the government has done so far in terms of making sure that we're focused on some of the security issues that you've raised, making sure that we're addressing some of the standards that uh, we need to promulgate as a function of interoperability, data portability, and security, and procurement. And Dave McClure uh, will talk about the procurement strategy, and uh, Sita Forlani will talk about our standards activities. But this work has been underway since uh, April of last year. 
I want to leave you with a closing slide that you see on uh, slide 7. What you see on the left is a cave. This is where most of the federal government's HR records are. What you see on the right is what the American people expect from their government. The culture in the government historically has been there's a form for that, and the American people have to wait in line, hold on the phone, um, or they actually have to come in and submit these complicated forms. Yet in the private sector, what we've seen is innovation, and what we're trying to do is close that gap by making sure that we're responsibly and safely moving to a cloud environment. Thank you for the opportunity to testify, and I look forward to your questions. Thank, thank you very much for your testimony. Of course, um, let me just... Mr. McCurry is the Associate Administrator of the General Services Administration's Office of Citizen Services and Innovative Technologies. Welcome, Mr. McClure. Thank you, Chairman Towns, Ranking Member Bill Bray, all the other committee members here this morning. Thanks for having me testify in front of you on, on what the General Services Administration is doing to assist in the adoption of cloud computing. I think Vivek has done a good job in outlining for you what we see as some of the tremendous benefits of cloud computing uh, adopted, being adopted in the federal government. At GSA, we also believe that the adoption of safe and secure cloud computing by the federal government represents a huge opportunity for us in terms of getting access to more modern technology and lowering the cost that we're spending on technology. And various forms of cloud computing are already in place in the federal government today. Quick example, at GSA, we have put the government's main primary information portal, USA.gov, into a cloud computing environment last year. We're already reaping the benefits in terms of a, a more uh, reliable uh, uptime from the system. We've uh, lowered our overall computing costs by an estimated $1.7 million. And we actually have raised the security posture of the system by going to a more reliable secu security arrangement with uh, our cloud provider. So it does have tremendous benefits. As you also know, GSA plays a lead role in the President's sustainability agenda. We anticipate that cloud computing will be a major factor in reducing the environmental impact of technology and also will help achieve uh, some of our national sustainability goals. Cloud computing can be part of an overall strategy to reduce the need for these multiple data centers that we have all over the government and the energy they consume. So we see it helping improve services by lowering the cost and also maintaining uh, a better environment uh, compared to the redundant and also often needlessly redundant uh, brick and mortar data center structures that we have in, in place today. As part of our leadership in the cloud computing environment, we have stood up a cloud computing uh, program management office. It's housed in my office at GSA. It provides the technical and administrative leadership for uh, the administration's cloud computing initiatives. We support the design and operation of cloud procurement vehicles. We look at ways in which we can identify enhancing security requirements, working closely with NIST uh, as well as with OMB. We have facilitated the adoption of these requirements uh, in, the last, uh, in the last few months. We also sponsor some cloud demonstration projects from a piloting perspective so that we can demonstrate how this technology can be effective before going full bore. And we are engaged in data center analysis and strategy planning with OMB as part of our responsibilities with the, with the, with the uh, PMO as well. I think we also play a huge role in disseminating information throughout the government on just what is happening in cloud computing. We're a knowledge repository for examples, best practices, uh, and uh, um, uh, things that have really worked for us to date. So let me just highlight real quickly a few of those areas for you. I think one of the most significant challenges we face in cloud computing is certainly in the security area. Agencies are concerned about the risk of housing data off-site uh, in a cloud if federally mandated security controls and accountabilities are not in place. The federal CIO, our cloud PMO, the CIO Council, which has a security working group, uh, and NIST have come together to try to tackle that problem. We have developed a process and corresponding contru uh, security controls that have been agreed to by multiple agencies. We're calling this program FedRAMP. 
Uh, it provides a uniform government-wide risk management approach for enterprise-level IT systems, and it will enable agencies to either use or leverage existing security authorizations. Mr. Chairman, this is a first in the federal government, and it should greatly reduce our security cost. It should en enable rapid acquisitions of solutions. It should reduce agency levels of effort, and it should shift the focus of uh, security to monitoring and protecting uh, our, our, our computing environments. GSA is working with uh, NIST and the, security and the CIO Council to make sure that this program is put in place, and uh, we're piloting, we'll be piloting several uh, things through FedRAMP uh, to, to get it up to speed uh, with some improvements as we, as we test it out. The second area is providing newly commercial provided cloud services via a website called apps.gov. This is a primary responsibility of GSA. It's modeled on GSA product and service acquisition storefronts. It provides an easy, simple way to find, research, and procure commercial cloud products and services. Uh, and we feel like that has been a, a real a benefit to federal agencies, both in the software as a service area and soon to be an infrastructure as a service for cloud computing. A new class of internet-based applications have also come on board called Web 2.0 that focus on delivering information to, to, to diverse communities. Many of these solutions are web-based and many are also hosted in the cloud. We at GSA are making sure that we are providing as common tools to agencies uh, social media Web 2.0 tools that are completely policy compliant with all federal privacy and security policies, and it gives them an advantage in terms of doing this independently on their own. I think we've already achieved some significant cost savings by putting some of these in place government-wide. So cloud computing, from our perspective, has uh, the ability to fundamentally reshape how we're uh, approaching government operations and how we're using computing power for business process improvement and citizen service delivery support. It can also shift the focus to the added value use of information, which I think is what uh, our next decade is truly about, uh, and do this in a very cost-effective way in today's uh, digitally oriented wor Mr. world. Mr. McCook, could you sum up? Yeah, and thirdly, I think it frees up some resources for us to really uh, focus on some of the some of the real information needs of the government as well. So in general, I think uh, we, we're supporting uh, the effort uh, the best way we can with some of the, our procurement activities and some of our best practice to support. And I think these are adding up to uh, to really advance the the computing cause. Thanks. Thank you very much for your testimony. Um, Ms. Ferlani is director of the Information Technology Laboratory at the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Welcome. Well. Thank you, Chairman Towns and members of the committee. I appreciate the opportunity to appear before you today to discuss our role in the deployment of cloud computing technology in the federal government. Our role is to promote the effective and secure use of the technology within government by providing technical guidance and promoting standards. The three cybersecurity objectives, ensuring the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information technology systems are particularly relevant to cloud computing. These three objectives provide a technical foundation to help address the associated privacy requirements. This cloud model that we I've listed in my testimony is composed of five essential characteristics, three service models, and four deployment models, which are laid out fully in the written testimony. The NIST cloud computing definition is the following. Cloud computing is a model for enabling convenient, on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources, such as networks, servers, storage, applications, and services, which can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. This definition has been broadly recognized and helps to clarify a complex emerging information technology paradigm. However, there is still much work to be done. We have initiated focused activities to develop federal cloud computing security guidance, as well as to facilitate the development of cloud computing standards. The following are specific NIST efforts which promote the effective and secure use of cloud computing technology within government. NIST held a cloud computing forum and workshop in May to engage stakeholders on ways to best accelerate 
the federal government's secure adoption of cloud computing. Over 500 stakeholders attended this event. We are developing a cloud computing special publication which will provide insight into the technical benefits, risks, and considerations related to the secure and effective uses of cloud computing and provide guidance in the context of cloud computing to provide interoperability, portability, and security. This publication will also identify future research areas in cloud computing. As requested by OMB, NIST serves as the government lead working with other government agencies, industry, academia, and standards development organizations to leverage appropriate existing standards and to accelerate the development of cloud computing standards where gaps exist. We have initiated the Standards Acceleration to Jumpstart Adoption of Cloud Computing, another acronym, SAJAC. The SAJAC goal is to facilitate the accelerated development of high quality standards and to reduce the technical uncertainty during the interim period before many cloud computing standards are formalized. NIST, in a technical advisory role, supports the federal interagency efforts which have been mentioned to the development of a concept for a federal approach to coordinate and apply consistent security authorization requirements for cloud computing systems. The NIST role is to provide guidance for a technical approach and process which is consistent with NIST security guidance in the context of the Federal Information Security Management Act. NIST has also initiated a strategic virtualization laboratory effort to research and evaluate the security of virtualization techniques and to mitigate security vulnerabilities in virtualized and cloud systems. This will inform NIST cloud and virtualization guidelines. We have also initiated a modeling and analyzing complex behaviors in cloud computing project. This project seeks to understand and predict behavior in large distributed information systems. In cloud computing, NIST is initiating a study of the applicability of our modeling and analysis techniques to computational clouds. As you have just heard, this is a big effort. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today on NIST's role in the development and deployment of cloud computing technology. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Ferlani. Um, Mr. Wilson. Chairman Towns, Ranking Member Issa, Chairwoman Watson, and Ranking Member Bill Brighton, and other members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in today's hearing on cloud computing. At Chairwoman Watson's request, GAO has been reviewing the information security implications of cloud computing and federal efforts to address them. Today, we are releasing our report. My statement will summarize the contents of that report. But first, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to recognize two members of my staff, Vijay D'Souza and Susan Dietrich, who were instrumental in the preparation of that report. As been discussed, cloud computing is a form of shared computing where users have access to scalable, on-demand information technology services and resources. Service providers offer these capabilities using several service and deployment models, including, for example, a private cloud which is operated <laughs> solely for an organization and a public cloud which is available to any paying customer. Cloud computing has both positive and negative information security implications. Potential security benefits include those related to broad network access, possible economies of scale, and use of self-service technologies. Federal agencies frequently cited as potential benefits low-cost disaster recovery and data storage, on-demand security controls, consistent application of those controls, and a reduced need to carry data and removable media. However, the use of cloud computing can also create numerous information security risks. 22 of 24 major agencies reported that they were concerned or very concerned about the potential security risks associated with cloud computing. These risks include ineffective or non-compliant security practices of the service provider, inability to examine controls of the provider, data leakage to unauthorized users, and loss of data if cloud service is terminated. These risks generally relate to the dependence on the security practices and assurances of the service provider and the sharing of computing resources. 
They also may vary depending upon the cloud deployment model used. For example, private clouds may have a lower threat exposure than public clouds, but evaluating this risk requires an examination of the specific controls in place for the cloud's implementation. Federal agencies have begun efforts to address information security issues for cloud computing, but specific guidance is lacking and often uh, and efforts remain complete. Although individual agencies have identified security measures needed when using cloud computing, they have not always developed corresponding guidance. In addition, several government-wide cloud computing initiatives are underway by organizations such as OMB and GSA. Nevertheless, much work remains. For example, OMB has not yet finished a cloud computing strategy or defined how information security issues will be addressed in this strategy. GSA has begun a procurement for expanding cloud computing services, but still needs to develop specific plans for establishing a shared information security assessment and authorization process. Furthermore, NIST has not yet issued cloud-specific security guidance. Both federal and private sector officials have identified the need for such guidance. Accordingly, in the report being released today, GAO recommended that OMB, GSA, and NIST take several actions to address these issues. These agencies generally agreed with our recommendations and indicated that actions were planned or underway to implement them. To summarize, the use of cloud computing offers promise but also carries risk. Until federal guidance and processes that specifically address information security are developed, agencies may be hesitant to implement cloud computing programs and those that have implemented such programs may have appropriate or may not have appropriate security controls in place. Uh, this concludes my statement. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Um, let me just announce to the members that there are three votes and um, what I would suggest is that um, we break now and then come back 10 minutes after the last vote. We will, and then, um, so um, to the witnesses, of course, you need to stay in the area. <laughs> Thank you very much. And we'd be, uh, oh, oh, no doubt about it, at least be in half an hour or more before we get back. But uh, so we will recess.